idea that this went on for such a long period of time and either the Capitol Police simply were outnumbered, but then to not see a response, uh, a more vigorous and forceful response has got to just be, I mean, the, the contrast between the protests we saw earlier this year and what we saw being allowed to go forward today is just striking. It's so striking as someone who um, remembers seeing protesters moved out of the way physically with some sort of chemical gas so that President Trump could take a picture in front of St. John's Church. Um, as someone who's gone to Ferguson, Missouri, who has seen protesters there protesting the death of an unarmed um, teenager in the street um, being moved aside with tear gas and with tanks. This was the Capitol Police in some ways being caught off guard, it seems. Um, the president announced several hours ago that he was going to be marching with them, uh, marching with these protesters to the Capitol. Um, but it seems the Capitol Police just simply did not have the force needed and, and the manpower needed to protect the U.S. Capitol. And that really is something that's very scary. I'm standing in the other building in, in D.C. Um, there are a number of them, of course, that are federal buildings in D.C., but the White House is probably the only other place that you think of as super safe. It's, it's seen as a sort of security bubble. I've been in the Capitol so many times, and when you enter that rotunda, you feel like the security guards are not going to let anyone in there that doesn't need to be there. And instead, what we saw was a complete breach of that. And I should say there were, there were moments where we heard sirens, where we heard protesters outside the White House, but they didn't breach here. And some of that is because they're sympathetic to this White House. They like this White House. They're supporting this White House. Um, as a result, we didn't see the same force that we saw at the Capitol. Uh, you Michelle Sindor at the White House for us today, and as you have been all day today, thank you so much for your reporting. We'll check back with you later, thank for you. sure. Uh, I am joined now by the District Attorney, the Attorney General for the District of Columbia, uh, Carl Racine. He's on the telephone talking with us today. Uh, Mr. Racine, are you there? I'm here, William. Thank you very much. Very good to have you on the news hour. Thank you for talking with us. Um, I wonder if I could just initially get your reaction to what has unfolded here today. Well, uh, it's several fold and I'll try to be as brief as I can. I think Attorney General Barr's message um, is uh, plain, clear, and here unquestionably the truth. Uh, what we witnessed today was an American tragedy. It is outrageous. It is devastating. And I would add to it former Attorney General Barr's words, that it was unlawful, predictable, and encouraged by none other than the President of the United States. And so this is an unprecedented uh, event. Um, let me talk about the predictability for a moment. We know that these hate groups and militia groups, I'm talking about not the peaceful protesters, but the people who broke police lines and uh, you know assaulted the capitol and left senators and congress uh, women and men huddled down onto the ground with their gas masks out and ushered onto underground trains for refuge the same refuge sought by the vice president of the united states so this is a tragic day that was predictable because the social media made it clear as to what was going to occur and I have to tell you, Yamish is exactly right. And you too, William, when you bring into contrast the Black Lives Matter protest, you'll remember and there are pictures and I would urge you uh, and your fantastic program to show the images. What you'll see in the images of the defense of the Capitol during the Black Lives Matter protest are Warden and other officials from the Bureau of Prisons, law enforcement heavily uh, armed and in uniform, bulletproof vest and mask, from the uh, Homeland Security, National Guard from overwhelmingly states that are run, unfortunately, you know, states run by Republican governors, protecting a capital for no reason where there was a peaceful protest. And what you saw today, sadly, and I certainly don't mean to demean Capitol policemen individually, but you saw Capitol policemen running away from individuals who were breaking into the Capitol and defacing the offices of our most respected elected officials. Again, I'm going to cite Yamish. She and I were, or 
Haitian Americans. We love our country of Haiti. It's been beset, unfortunately, by political corruption and instability, sometimes with the cooperation of the United States of America. A coup d'etat in Haiti is not something, sadly, that is unusual. What you have today was a attempted coup d'etat that may still be in process because the president claims falsely that he won an election that every court has rejected, including a conservative Supreme Court. And so now is the time for all responsible Americans. And thank God for the former defense secretary and the business leaders to finally come out and make clear that our democracy relies on a peaceful transition of power. Every side feels the loss, but we get on with it. We regroup, and then we fight a political battle in the next four years. It's time for Donald Trump and his supporters to leave Washington, D.C. peacefully. It's too late for them to leave humbly or with any decency. 